Yeah. All right. Well, the next topic is the cultural hot button topic of homosexuality. Um, and and this is something that when Christians are either asked to speak on it or you know it's discussed within a Christian framework, oftentimes Christians are looked at on this subject as intolerant, hateful, um, self-righteously, judgmental, that kind of thing. Uh, and so I just wanted to open up the, um, the floor for us to discuss this topic from, from a biblical standpoint. Uh, I've personally um, have been a little concerned lately in some ministries and, and them sort of changing their stance uh, from away from the biblical uh, stance on, on the issue. I understand that historically the church hasn't always been, you know, extremely warm to those who struggle with uh, same-sex attraction or gender identity issues. Um, and so there definitely has to be compassion there, you know, as we're all sinners and we all need grace. But um, we, we definitely have to have to stand on God's word. And, um, you know, I've struggled with certain sins, but I can't justify them. And if someone struggles with homosexuality, that's no reason to justify it. If God says that it's a sin, and, and uh, I'll let the rest of these brothers take the floor, but another thing that concerns me is that our society now is we've opened the gate, and now that homosexuality and transgenderism is sort of yesterday's sexual revolution, the new thing seems to be like polyamory, multiple, you know, now you have you know three and four and five people arguing for marriage equality rights, because now that we've opened the door, there's really no stopping it, and whose moral standard do we use to, to uh, dictate what's right and what's wrong or to decide morality? So, I mean, I think it's an issue that, that obviously we need to address in our society. I know that there's a lot of risk associated with standing on the word of God in relation to the subject, uh, but uh, I think we have to st stick by the word. And when we don't, our society goes down the slippery slope. Well, one thing I, I, want, to, I want to make a distinction. Um, so you have... You have, have same-sex attraction, yeah. which is one thing, and then you have engagement in the act of, in homosexual acts, yeah. which is, which is another, it's the acting out of the, what's, what's happening internally. Um, can we all agree that the, that the act itself, biblically, is de defined as sin? That's mm -hmm. yes. agree with that? Um, and, yeah, and, and I want to, you know, just because even that has become a question now these days. Like, does the Bible actually teach that um, that this is sin? Um, and so, I uh, just want to just point out one passage. Is one passage? There's many that we could look at, but First uh, Corinthians chapter six, um, starting at verse nine, says, uh, "Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers." nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. I think the thing that really <coughs> stands out to me from a passage like this is it's clear in, in declaring that homosexuality is a sin, mm -hmm. and yet it's not in isolation. Yeah. There are a whole <laughs> bunch of, like, that's one sin in a list of sins. And such were some of you, it says. I exactly. Yeah. Um, and and so, so we never, as Christians, um, have the right to self-righteously um, condemn as though, like, none of these actually apply to us, right. um, mm -hmm. both before and after coming to Christ in, in one sense of just struggling with sin, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so just wanted to just make that, make that clear. Oh, that's yeah. very good. And then the, the end of the passage you read is that the gospel of Jesus Christ, him coming uh, to live the life that a sinner couldn't live so that they can be right with God, die in their place and be raised up 
um, and have the Spirit live in them, it applies to homosexuals who repent. Mm. People who once were homosexuals, as it says, such were some of you. Yeah. Um, so I think <coughs> my, my burden is I've noticed that a lot of Christian, a lot of Christian fundamentalists will blast homosexuality and they won't give the gospel. Yeah. That Christ has compassion and mercy for sexual homosexual sinners. Yeah. The other thing is, I think we forget, like you said, we're not any better. Because um, as sinners, we can't look down on them. Um, and so the, the, the need for the truth of that this is sin and the reality that Christ offers grace to people who are stuck in it or people who are struggling with it. Yeah. Um, so that both seem to be um, necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, to be to be made clear. Just a question: What do you guys, as far as now? Of course, there's this issue of, you know, this issue of homosexuality and it being a sin. What's your thought on, thoughts on the agenda that's out there right now? That's a whole other. And that's where I think a lot of people say, "Well, why do you focus in on homosexuality? It's it's included in a litany of sins, and you have activists who who reference you know Levitical laws about shellfish and things like that, which they." They really could use a, a class in theology. Uh, and I don't blame well, king. But um, <laughs> and, and I don't think that the, the you know the the body is focusing on it. The, the body of believers is focusing on it because they want to just you know sort of zoom in on one sin and self righteousness. I think that it's in light of the fact that there is a real activist agenda that is actually aiming at the youth, especially, mm -hmm. um, and and obliterate. And, I would say even obliterate the church. Yeah, I mean they're they're really you know having a child you know I already see things on TV that you know on television and I'd be like oh my goodness I'll turn it you know what I mean it's a kids program and there's this little things creeping in you know everything going on with Chick Fil A right now um, them taking a stand yeah. and and they're pretty much being dogged up and another thing I, I want to mention too is I personally don't like it when they compare the struggle uh, of the civil rights. Um, you know, to homosexual rights. Yeah. And I think about people who died, Emmett Till, you know, and, and, and down the line, Martin Luther King. And I, I, I'm just like, you know, when have they ever had to go through the, the sorts of things that, yeah. you know, these, these people have gone through? Right. Yeah. And I, I think, just want to go okay. ahead. Well, I was, well, two <laughs> things, like, um, <clears throat> one, like, like, I think the, the focus on it is a lot to do with the like this this false cons this false idea that homosexuality is this thing that's i think cuz with other things like even homosexuals will agree like oh yeah that's obviously bad like if you steal something or whatever like other sins they don't have an issue with but homosexuality becomes a focus point because it becomes this like is it something that can be repented of like there's this there's this false, there's this lie out there that, oh, you're born this way. There's nothing you can do about it. That's part of your DNA. And, and it's to like, be celebrated. Yeah, and you're stuck, <laughs> you're stuck that way. And so we, we can't get mad at you for it. We should just celebrate you the way you are. And we would argue that, all right, you're born that way. You're not born that way. If you are born that way, be born again. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still like we were born sinners too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all, we're all in the same boat. Um, and, See, um, and I think what's, what's so offensive to many about that statement is, mm -hmm. is that, you know, that many, many would say, like, this, this is an identity issue, right? Mm -hmm. So ha having their identity bound up in, in, in being homosexual, right? Yeah, and I, would, mm -hmm. and I would add to that, our identity before Christ was, I'm a sinner. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like... To the depth that you can go with that, I can go that depth with any other sin that I, I've struggled with in my Slaves past. Slaves like, to various passions. Exactly. So, and but on top of that, I also add that, um, like it's also the agenda part of it that, like to the extent that, like, because when I saw when I read the news about Chick Fil A, and maybe I don't have my information correct. But all they did was support a marriage conference, right. yeah. not an anti-gay marriage conference. It was like we weren't even talking about you guys. Like right. we were doing our own thing in our own in our own little circle, and we supported it because marriage is, is something to be celebrated. And all of a sudden, it became this negative thing but that we were getting a, attacked for. They don't have a right to yeah. support marriage, a marriage conference that that stands for traditional marriage, and that's where it's getting. And that's why the that's why there is this. That's why there is this counter 
from 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 the Christian Church is because well, uh, they're, they're basically uh, we're, we're we have a right bullied. to an opinion. Yeah, we're being <laughs> bullied. We're being put in the closet. And I think that's the issue. Dr. Is that Michael now that you know clear. now we're yeah. being put in the closet, and it has nothing to do with hate. It has nothing to do with phobia. It has to do everything with love, and love speaks the truth, and love gives the gospel. The gospel is that you can be saved, you can be set free, and I have friends who come out of that lifestyle, and they're what they're living examples, despite what. Uh, highly pressured psych, psychiatric uh, associations say they're living ex examples that, that the God of Scripture and the Blessed Messiah can change anyone's situation. And I, think, I think the thing about that is people feel like they'll, the argument is, well, if people love each other, who are we to judge their love for each other? Or if I feel this way deep in the core of my being, who are you to tell me that I can't go against my feelings? And I just say... I think the issue is that who are we allowing to define what love yeah. is and how we should respond to our feelings. So the believer says that my definition of love is what God would say love is. Yeah. So if God says I should respond to a woman or a man this way, then I should. In terms of my feelings, I don't wake up every day and look at my wife and feel overwhelmingly like she's the best person in the world and I just love her to the ends of the earth. Sometimes I wake up feeling like, man, what am I doing? But love is not dictated by my feelings. It's dictated by my commitment yeah. to what God says about um, what I should be doing. So I just say that um, I think we have to give a proper definition of love. We have to look through love in the lenses of what God would say love is. And as you wrestle through, whether that's having sex with the the opposite, opposite sex, sex like which is a sin the, it's a, that many it's of us just as, guilty of. It's yeah. just as horrible <laughs> in the sight of the Lord that we would trust, you know, that we would find our identity as you wrestle with, dag, should I be, I, I, I'm attracted to a, the same sex, that you would wrestle through, like, how does God feel about this, and what's God's purpose for having the opposite sex come together mm -hmm. in a marital context. I, th I think one, one thing, and as we begin to think about wrapping this up, um, is, is there a word that we could say to um, people who are actually Christians in the church um, who, who struggle with same-sex attraction? Um, oftentimes the church has not res responded well mm -hmm. um, uh, to these brothers and sisters, and. Um, and many have been made to feel like outcasts. Um, so what, uh, what, what, what can we say to a Christian? Grace, his grace is sufficient, you know, uh, you know through our struggles, you know, and um, ultimately this life is not it. And if we struggle through this life to make it into the kingdom, even if that means, you know, we resist our, our very own desires, our own passions, our own wants, our own likes, mm. Um, like Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. It is better to enter he heaven maimed than, to, than to, to enter hell with both your limbs. I know many people who struggle with homosexuality who are believers think that their sin is too much right. for Christ. Um, Christ promises, whoever comes to me, I will not cast you out. And I think of Hebrews 7, 25, uh, which says that Jesus Christ is able to save to the uttermost Amen. those who draw near to God through him. Since he always lives as their high priest to stand uh, for them on their behalf before God. So Christ is able to rescue uh, people with this issue. Yeah. Amen. Be encouraged. And I would add, um, I would really, really encourage our brothers and sisters to make sure that they are going to a, a gospel preaching church. And so, um, and if you're, if you're struggling with overcoming sin, you need to be consistently met with the gospel and counseled by the cross. And you want to make sure you're in a community of people that um, are aware of their own frailty, and but also the power of of Christ. Um, and so, if you, but perhaps I would, I would like again, if you're not at a church that does that, I would, I would just encourage you to, to peacefully find a just that a, a, a spot that is zealous about mercy for sinners and uh, the completion that's to come with Christ. And so, and so uh, I was just gonna say Hebrews, I think it's ten or eleven. And the text just says, he is perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Mm -hmm. and I think this is such an encouraging text to realize no matter who you are, the reality is that in Christ, first you're positionally seen as perfect. Amen. 
I mean, that's a great beauty yes. that he positioned. He's already positionally said you good. Then, um, in a response to what he's positionally done for us, we practically begin to walk that out. So as you, that struggle is just as real as the dude who on watching porn on his laptop, or or the girl who who's masturbating or whatever. That it's just as real as any of those things, and we have to trust in what Christ is positionally. Um, placed us in and then trust that his spirit will practically um, with the with believers and others around us to be able to walk that out yeah. the restoration so, album. so so just the last thing I want to say as we close um, is that we can as Christians who believe the scriptures proclaim both truths homosexual sin is wrong and sinful just like every other form of sin and at the same time, Christ in the gospel through his death and resurrection is sufficient to save the worst of sinners, Amen. including all of us. Amen. Yes. As, yes. as some of us were. That's the good news. Yes. Sinners yes. like yes. us. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Sorry, Turn off your phone. You got to speak on this next one. Sorry, or we're gonna, That's on Brian, you